Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This week I've printed some replacement feet for my Logitech K200 keyboard. Let's take a closer look. Before we kick off with the episode, thank you everyone who left a comment last week, especially those who commented on models they'd like to see, things they'd like to see in the series, maybe things that they thought were missing from the episode that shouldn't have been there. They were all very helpful. So a number of months ago when I moved in here, I must have been quite rigorous with my moving as I seem to have broken the feet off of this keyboard. Both of them. So I need some replacements for those because I don't like typing when it's flat, I like a small incline. And so I went on to think of us and I had a little look and I found these. This is a model by Agarajag. Agarajag. Yep. Now this is in two separate parts. There's one if you have the rubber parts and one if you don't have the rubber parts. Ideally, I'd have had the rubber parts because that means I can have the uh, stop the keyboard slipping about. But I don't have them. I lost them. So we'll just print the one with the uh, without the little space. The printer that I've used to print this was again the Prusherai 3 Mark III and it did a pretty fantastic job. While I've had some issues with the bed levelling on that printer, this printer, for such a small model it really makes very little difference. As long as you get your Z height right, pretty much anything will stick very easily for the number of time, the, the period of time that it takes to print such a small thing. The settings that I used to print this were a 0.1mm layer height with a standard PET profile that comes with the Prusa. All those you should see on screen now and I'll give you a moment to read them. filament that I used to print this was Filamentive's PETG, or more specifically RPETG, where the R stands for recycled, because Filamentive RPETG, up to 90% recycled content. The R stands for recycled, because Filamentive's filaments, being what they produce, are up to 90% recycled, so while it won't be entirely recycled material, you can be pretty sure that a good portion of the material that you're printing has been previously used and therefore recycled into this. Now let's take a closer look at the design itself. I imagine the creator will have literally just measured the original K200 feet, drawn it up in CAD and then made an STL. After all, there doesn't seem to be any specific design considerations for 3D printing. For example, the, uh, the little part that sticks into the keyboard remains circular and typically when you're printing that like that and it's a cylinder you'd need support but I mean it's very very small so it seems to print all right as it is. Let's just check how well it fits. So hopefully that goes in there. Well that seems pretty much perfect. In the other side, a bit of a tighter fit perhaps. All right. It doesn't seem to have the sort of click functionality. Normally they would click out and click in. So maybe the dimensions are a little bit off, but I think that's more than good enough. Nice. It's not really wobbly. Got a nice incline, got a nice incline on my keyboard now. Folds in, folds out. I'd say that's a very successful print. Now, as I've already mentioned, the original part had a little rubber part at the end of the foot to stop the keyboard sliding around. If I demonstrate, this is what sliding looks like. If you had something like TPU, a soft rubbery filament that you could print, then you could maybe, I mean, you just probably wouldn't want to print the whole foot out of it, but you could print a little block that fits in that space and would make a nice rubber stop to stop it sliding about. Unfortunately, I don't have any TPU filament and while I know the Prusa Mark III is capable of it, I haven't tried it yet. The print quality came out pretty much fine. There were no serious issues, but I would suggest that you modify the original profile to increase the fan speed slightly. I've done a couple of other prints with this PETG on the Mark III, and it exhibits some stringing, and I think you would probably want to solve that by increasing your cooling. In the original profile, it's about 30 to 50%, depending on 
what it's doing, but I suggest probably bumping that up to maybe 40 to 90% or 40 to 80% just to get a bit more cooling. You don't want to overdo it, but PETG bonds very well to itself anyway. So that's pretty much it for this episode of 3D Twip. The links for the filament, the printer and the parts will be in the description below. Don't forget to share any models or suggestions you have in the comments section. Like and subscribe if you want to see more from me. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram to see some behind the scenes and other little pictures and tidbits like that. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.